With me today, the wonderfully talented and eclectic Mary Elizabeth Winstead. You know her from various Scream Queen movies, such as horror films like Final Destination 3, The Thing, and Death Proof. And of course, she starred as Ramona Flowers in the cult hit Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. You can now see her in the new A&E series, The Returned, as well as her latest thriller, Faults, which is available now via video on demand. She's had a kind of an incredible career for a young girl. I, Thank you so much. How, what did you start when you were six? I kind of did. I started I started working out in L.A. when I was 14, so pretty, pretty young start. Did you grow up here? Sort of. A mix of here and, and Salt Lake City. I was living in Salt Lake City half the time, and then I would come out here and audition and, and go back. Mormon and lady? No, no. Uh, Lived with a bunch okay. of Mormons. Well, Salt but... Lake City is half <laughs> Yeah. Mormon, right? We're yeah. originally from um, North Carolina, so we're Southern. Very Southern family. All these diverse roles, is that what you, that is appealing yeah. the most to you? Yeah, that's kind of my goal, is to keep it interesting. You know, I don't want it to get boring or stale, or I like to keep it exciting, at least for myself, and hopefully for the audiences as well. In the movie Faults, your character is being forced to regain her sense of self after joining a mysterious cult. Yes. That's an intense kind of Very role. intense. How do you prepare for something like that? Well, um, it was an interesting process. My husband wrote the film as well as directed it, and I produced it. So I got to be involved from the get-go, which was really fun. Um, but the interesting thing about this is that it's also kind of a dark comedy. So it didn't require as much rigorous research as it would have <laughs> if it was a straight-up drama. What are you, decompressing this? Uh, yeah, well, there's a lot of deprogramming, but it's a lot of who's deprogramming who and who's manipulating who and a lot of mind games involved. All shot in one tiny room? Most of it, yeah, the majority of it is on a soundstage that we built, um, a motel room on a soundstage, yeah. What's it like to work for your husband? It was a lot of husband. fun. It was actually, we work really well together, um, thankfully. And most people didn't actually know we were a couple until the rap party, and then everybody, like the crew was like, what, what? what? <laughs> they had no idea. He's Riley Stearns, yeah. right? You said you'd like to produce as well mm -hmm. as that, huh? Why? Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of films that I want to see that I'm not really seeing, you know, and I'd like to be a part of bringing those films to light or, you know. Do so you like behind the scenes as much? I do. Well, I think acting is always going to be my first choice, my first love, and I would love to, you know, produce things that I act in, but also veer out into producing things that I don't act in and just help other artists and, and other actors and filmmakers um, get a voice if I can. You know, I think I'm working towards getting to that, that level. Why were you chosen for horror films? You're beautiful and talented. Why horror films? I don't know. I kind of stumbled into them, really. <laughs> and, and then once I was in it, I was sort of taken in by this community. And they were really lovely to me. And um, the director of Final Destination 3 actually gave my husband his first job and got him his start in the industry. And so it was just a... Mostly it was the people behind the scenes that actually got me into it. What's... Uh, acting is acting, right? Yeah. But what's special about horror films? They're tough. You have they're to have actually, a good screen, right? Well, you have to have a good screen, but but they're really um, taxing. I mean, I've done, I've spent so many nights hyperventilating in the cold in the middle of the night <laughs> in winter. You know, <laughs> when you're watching it, it's sort of like fun popcorn, whatever. So you don't think about all the work that goes into it. But they're actually some of the most challenging projects I've done have been the horror films. Any of them tongue in cheek? Oh yeah, most of them are. Yeah. A lot of them are comedy. Right? Yeah, kids love them. Satire at the end of the yeah. day, you know. All right, you played Ramona Flowers in Scott Prilgo. Now tell me about this. It did not do well at the box office. Right. It came out five years ago. Yeah. How did it become a cult hit? It was interesting. It was sort of a cult hit, you know, like a year after it came out, which is kind of a rarity to have happen. But it was just one of those things where, for whatever reason, it didn't connect to the box office. It was sort of too weird and unique and unlike anything else, and people didn't really know what to make of it when was it first it came out. Was it released wide? It was very wide. Because um, that was a big comic book, right? It was a big comic. It was a very big budget film, um, which is why the expectations were that it should make a lot of money and it should do really well. And so when it didn't, you know, I think we were all a little bit s surprised, but it's been kind of cool to have it grow and to have it. How you did know, that happen? It's just a really good film. Um, it, it really. What did kinda, the critics say? Critics loved it. Critics loved it. It's just the audiences didn't, didn't. They just didn't go. I don't think they understood what it was. You know, it's very. Um, uh, the visuals are very kind of eye-catching and, and kind of in your face, and it's sort of, it's it's a visceral experience. So I think when people saw the trailers, they were a little bit like, I don't know, what the... Who is Ramona Flowers? Ramona Flowers is this very enigmatic, mysterious girl who changes her hair co color every week, and she basically, in order to date her, 
you have to defeat her seven evil exes in battle. So Michael Sarah plays Scott Pilgrim, and he wants to date my character, Ramona Flowers, but her baggage that she brings to the table is that she has all of these evil ex-boyfriends um, that demand to fight him. And so it's a lot of martial arts and comedy and action, and it's just, like, incredibly fun. So where do people watch it? Uh, um, online, on iTunes, on, it plays on HBO and Comedy Central. Who played Scott Pilgrim? Michael Sarah. Yeah, super, super funny, adorable, sweet person. So that took off, and has that helped your career even though it wasn't a box office hit? I think it has. I think now a lot of people who love that movie don't even realize that it wasn't a box office hit. Like when people come up to me and tell me, you know, I'm such a fan of that movie, you know, and I say, oh yeah, it's too bad I didn't do well. They're like, what? They really, they don't know because, you know, they weren't paying attention to the numbers. It was, Ramona is ranked 70th in Comic Buyer's Guide, 100 Sexiest Women in Comics. <laughs> Do you, do you see yourself as sexy? Oh, God, no. You don't? No, um, but that's really lovely. But yeah. yeah, I've never really, I've always felt like I, you know, that's something that, um, you know, I, I have less than other actresses. You know, the other actresses have the sex appeal thing and I'm sort of, I've got my other stuff. <laughs> Are you ready for that big shot? You know, it's interesting. I definitely, I'm at the point in my life and career where I place doing interesting roles over doing the big stuff, but I would love for them to combine. That would be really bad, nice. Uh, yeah. It wouldn't be bad. Tell me about your new A&E series, The Returned. Well, it's about this small town where people start returning from the dead. And Wasn't that an ABC? Thing? I know, I hear that a lot. It's, it's very similar in plot, but very different in execution, and the writing is very different, and the characters are very different. It's actually based on a French show um, that is really critically acclaimed, beautiful show. Um, and so we're just kind of doing our American take on that. And is it on it. already? Uh, the French show has been on, yeah, the first season has aired. When does yours start on? Uh, ours actually just started last night, or night before last, on Monday night, yeah. Okay, so it's, uh, do you play a dead person who comes back, or are you no, a live person? No, I'm a live person, and my former fiance who died on our wedding day, or what was supposed to be our wedding day, he comes back six years after his death, and I've tried to move on, I've, I've got a child, I've sort of, you know, got a whole new life, and he shows up on my doorstep, and... How many years are you booked for it? Oh, um, I guess as long as they, they want me to do it, I think like five or something. Is like Resurrection that. still on? I think it's still on, yeah. The trouble with, Re uh, does this happen in your series, in Resurrection, mm -hmm. I loved it the first three, four times. Right. Then too many people started coming. Too many, right. I didn't know who was dead and who was alive. It gets a little confusing. Totally confused. Right. So I stopped. Right. What well, happens in yours? I mean, I, I haven't seen Resurrection, so I don't know the comparison. Um, but yeah, I mean, our center's around a small, relatively small group of people, at least for the first season. Who knows where the second season will go and if they'll bring in more people. That's always interesting as an actor. You know, you're just, the, you, don't know you trust the writers, but I definitely trust these writers. I think they're incredibly smart and bring so much pathos and emotion um, to this series and it really, it, it resonates, I think. So you're a very busy actress. Yeah, no. it's been busy, it's been All good. right, you were in a movie I loved, Kill the Messenger. Oh yeah. That should have done better. I know, Jeremy, Jeremy is so good in it. And you worked at the newspaper, right? I did, I was his editor. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was fantastic. Thank you. Had a party. deal with him. I know. I him. know. Well, you like working with him? He's a oh, great guy. He's so talented. I really thought when we were shooting that, I was like, he's gonna win awards for this. This is such an incredible performance, and you know, he should have. He's he's brilliant. Now, Carlton Cuse is in The Return, right? He's our showrunner, yeah. Yeah, he's our, our, our wow. big producer man, our boss man. <laughs> then you play Bruce Willis's daughter in two Die Hard films. I do, yes, the last two. I was I was in this. Those are both action, right? Yeah, a lot of action. Were you involved in a lot of the in, in the fourth one, I got a little involved at the end. I got to, you know, I got to shoot a gun and things like that. I got to get a little rough and tumble in there. And then you were recently, what, what, you've had, for a girl 11 years old, <laughs> how old are you? I'm 30. I've been around. You've a been little, in 100 a hundred movies. <laughs> you, were, you were recently directed in The Hollers by John Krasinski, yeah, right? Yeah, he's lovely. It was he's a, an actor. He's an actor who's on The Office, and it was just a small role. He asked me to come on and, and play the role of his ex-girlfriend in the film, and it was such an incredible cast and, and just a great script. Are you working all the time? The last couple years, it has kind of been all the time. I have This is my first time really being home 
um, for more than a day or two in like eight months or something. This is your first TV series? It is my first one since I was 16 years old. I did one season of a show when I was 16. What show? It was called Wolf Lake. It was with <laughs> Lou Diamond Phillips and Tim oh, Matheson. Really? Yes, yeah, it was fun. You want to direct? I do. One day I would like to, I would like to try my hand at it, um, but I don't know if I'll be a you know a director. Per now se. get this: you're also a singer. Yes. And you're part of the music duo Got a Girl with Dan the Automator. That's right. Who is Dan the Automator? Dan the Automator is a really talented producer and DJ who's been around for a long time. He kind of he he made it big in the '90s. He started the group Gorillas, and oh, he's probably had about you know 15 different musical groups that he's been a part of that have done really well. Did you always sing? I've always sang. I don't think I knew I was going to be a singer necessarily. He actually approached me after seeing me sing in this movie I did with Quentin Tarantino. And he was like, I love your voice. We should try something sometime. So we decided to do one song together that we would write and record. And then one song turned into 12. And then we had an album. And the album is called, <laughs> I love you, but I must drive you off this cliff now. I love you, but I must drive off this cliff now. So. I must drive off. Is that a song? <laughs> no. We were just, our songs are very sort of melancholy, but kind of tongue in cheek. So we just wanted something that, that represented that. This is almost weird to ask, but <laughs> what's next? <laughs> what's next? I don't really know. I have a film coming out next month um, that Chris Messina directed, that who's a lovely guy on the Mindy Project, has been in a billion incredible films. Um, and he's made his directorial debut. And um, I'm, I'm the lead role in that, so I'm really excited. And What do you play in that? I play um, a, a wife and, and young mother who's um, my husband and the father of my child is played by Chris Messina. Basically, at the beginning of the film, wakes up and, and tells me he, he doesn't want to be with me anymore. And it's sort of a bit of a role reversal in that my character is the one who works and he was the stay-at-home dad. So he leaves and I have to sort of deal with raising my son, who I haven't really spent a lot of time with because I'm, I'm a workaholic. And and trying to kind of figure out how to be a mom. And it's a, it's a great, great role for me. I love now, it. With all these things in 10 years, you're 40 years old. You'll have a mm, child like that. Yes, I would love to have, I would love to start a family. Yeah. I would love to, um, I would love to be producing and directing and singing and, and, singing and still doing interesting projects that excite me. I think that's ultimately is I want to still be excited by what, by what I'm doing. That's where I hope to be. But one thing in, a, in a, a, you know, the Screen Actors Guild, most of the members of the Screen Actors Guild are always looking for work. Oh yeah, that's and absolutely you true. You are a working actress. I am. I feel very, very lucky to be. I'm very, very happy about that. Well, it's more than luck. You have to be very talented, but so diverse. Thank you. Uh, uh, kind of roles. They call in you for any, right? It's fun. It's fun. And that's what I hope I hope continues. I've been sort of able to be a bit of a chameleon, um, and, and I, I love to be able to, to do so that. So you could play Girl Next Door, Sexy Mistress, <laughs> <laughs> Horror Star, Kill Your Husband or Love right, Your Husband. Right, right, right. Well, you know, I'm, I'm down for all of them. I You're like, freaking you know. me out a little bit. <laughs> But the new series is The Returned, right? Yes. And that's on A&E. On A&E. And a great pleasure meeting you. You too. Thank you so much. Big thanks to my guest, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. You can check out her new series, The Returned. It airs Mondays at 10 p.m. 9 central on A&E. Her film, Faults, is also available now via video on demand. As always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. See you next time.